welcome to my channel made by cashcraft um, and, and welcome to my latest vlog and um, where i'm going to be talking about what i've been making in june um, so thanks very much for joining me and for everyone who's been following me um, also i've had a couple of comments um, commenting on me talking a bit fast and trying to slow it down so i'm really trying to work on that i am a naturally fast talker and also um, generally when I'm shooting these vlogs, my husband's taking the kids out, so I've got a limited space of time. So I'm conscious of trying to get through it all, but I'm doing my best to slow it down. So I'll yeah, try my best. Um, but yeah, it's a super hot day today. Um, we've had a little heat wave in the south of England. So I've been getting to um, wear some really summery makes and I've also been making a few summery things too. So I'm looking forward to sharing them with you today. Um, at the moment I'm wearing um, a make um, I made last summer. It's the um, Charlie Kaftan by Closet Case Patterns. And I made it in this um, rayon fabric from Lamazi Fabrics, which I think is quite pretty. It's kind of got um, kind of a blue base and then it's got sort of coral and white flowers on it. And it's lovely and flowy, so perfect for a hot day because it's really, really hot today. <laughs> so that's what I'm wearing. I'll stand up and show you a little bit more. See, they're kind of, um, it's got kind of a sort of cute little grown on sleeves and it ties around the back. So it kind of brings it in and a nice V shape. But yeah, it's very loose and billowy. So perfect for the heat because it is really hot. Um, but yeah, let's start on what I've been making in June. Um, I've actually had quite a busy month in June of sewing. I don't know quite how, um, but I guess um, the nice weather the last couple of weeks has made me think, oh, it'd be nice to make a few more summery things for my wardrobe. And also, um, I also attended the online sewing weekender um, a couple of weeks back, which was amazing. Um, it was such a great event um, and um, it was run by um, The Fold Line and the English Girl at Home and they raised a lot of money for charity and it was just so lovely having so many um, sewists coming together to enjoy sewing and watching um, vlogs by in people in the sewing community and um, yeah so I had a great time there and I managed to finish a dress so that was lovely um, but yeah um, let me start on what I've been making so I'm talking of the sewing weekender what I made on the sewing weekender um, was this dress here and I'll put a picture up of me wearing it too and um, it is the um, Zadie dress by Tilly and the Buttons. And I'll show you the pattern as well. So I made this version with their little cap sleeves. Um, and this lovely fabric from Lamazi Fabrics, um, again. It's, um, I think it's called Happy Allotment because it's kind of got little flowers and other little sort of planty things you might get from the allotment there. Um, so um, I, my first experience of sewing a Zadie dress was, was last year when I was quite new to sewing and it came up really large. I think I made the size two, which is usually just right for me for Tilly and the Buttons, but I don't know what happened. I was quite new to sewing, so it may well have been my, my own um, uh, mistake, but it just came up really big and I had to make loads of alterations to get it to sort of a fitting position. Um, this time I sized down to the size one, which is usually too small for me and Tilly, but it came up just right for the Zadie dress, so I was really pleased about that. Um, so yeah, as I said, I put a picture up of me wearing it. Um, it's quite a fiddly make. I wouldn't recommend it for a new, um, a new sewer because um, particularly um, the bodice, oh, I can't see very well on this fabric because it's all one fabric, but on the pattern, you have to kind of piece the bodice together here. Um, and um, particularly these bits here, um, it's quite tricky to get them all just right. So it looks um, right and doesn't puck or anything. So it was a little bit fiddly, um, but it was quite an enjoyable challenge. And I've worn this dress already. It's got really nice big pockets. Um, and yeah, it's really comfy. And I thought um, having a sort of stretchy jersey dress is perfect for me um, when I'm down on the floor with my children. And I actually wore this um, strawberry picking and it was just right for that because it was nice and um, relaxed. So that was my first make. So my next um, make for June was another quite summery one. And um, you might recognise this fabric if you've um, watched my June sewing fabric haul video. And it's this one here. And I'll put a picture up of me wearing it too. It's the honeycomb dress by Kokoara Crafts. And I made it in this um, lovely cotton lawn from Minerva Crafts. Um, it's by Atelier Brunette and it's really lightweight, um, perfect for hot weather. And it's got this cute little sort of um, origami style bird detail on it, um, which I think is quite pretty. And I added on little buttons also from Minerva Crafts, little wooden buttons that are flower shaped. Um, and so yeah, this is my second, um, no, my third honeycomb dress and my second one with the um, sleeveless version. And um, what to mention about it, um, I made the smallest size because I do find it comes up on, on the bigger side. I added the waist ties, these little waist ties here, which make a really nice bow detail at the sides of the dress and pockets, of course. Um, and I made my own facings for the armholes um, because I find often with armholes, um, once you add the bias binding, I don't know whether it's how I do it, but it ends up a little bit tight or sometimes puckered. So I prefer to draft a facing and I find that goes in more neatly. Um, 
So that was my um, second make for June and I wore that this week and it's lovely and cool and breezy because the, there's quite, the armholes are quite generous so there's plenty of air <laughs> flowing through for the hot weather. Um, and I think it's just a really pretty dress with some really pretty details um, and I like that fabric so um, that was my second make, the honeycomb dress by Kokoara Crafts. Um, then on something um, a little bit brighter, um, which I started at the sewing weekend and then had a chance to finish this week, um, was this here. Oop, show you. Ah, there, I'll show you them up there. These are, they're looking a little bit crumpled there. Um, these are the Megan Nielsen flint shorts and um, I'll put a picture up of me wearing them and I'll show you the pattern too. So this is the pattern. You can do the um, the flint shorts as a short or a trousers. I haven't done the trousers yet because I'm I'm not a big wide leg trouser person, although I have seen some lovely looking pairs on some other people. Um, but the shorts, which I made, I made this um, tie version here with a little tie there, which you'll see on my photo. And um, I'm, the main reason I chose the tie version was because this red fabric, I wasn't sure I'd be able to get a um, matching button um, to show, because the buttons on the other version are visible. And um, I've just, our local haberdashery in town has been closed and so I've been trying to source fabric and buttons as much as possible online but sometimes I do struggle with the colour matching and I think red's quite a challenging colour to match because you know orangey red or, or deeper red. Um, so what I did was make the tie version and then I added a little button inside um, that I had in my, um, in my stash and then I kind of did a little bit of um, overlocking um, that kind of matched that button. <laughs> so just to, I know it's only the inside, but I do like the inside to look quite pretty. Um, and then I did um, French seams on quite a lot of the seams inside, as you can see, just so it looked quite neat. Um, but yeah, th these are my flint shorts. They are, um, a again, a lovely make for summer weather. Um, this, the fabric I used for the, this version was a viscose linen blend from Lamazi Fabrics. Um, I've made one pair of viscose linen um, blend flint shorts before but I think for the first pair I made the linen content was higher um, and so they came up a little bit more stiff and um, with this pair I think the viscose content was higher so a little bit more loose and flowy which I do quite like for this weather and it gives a slightly different look the shaping is a slightly um there's less of kind of slightly less of a sort of tulip shape to this pair because the, the flint shorts have this lovely feature at the front These kind of um can you see it's kind of sort of tuck pleats here at the front which do kind of give a lovely shape um, but yeah, this one's a little bit more drapey and loose, so I do not really like that for the hot weather, and I'm hoping I'll get some nice wear out of these, and I think they're quite bright and jolly. So that's my flint shorts. Um, what else to show you? Um, this is one of my favourite makes of the summer this year so far, um, and it's this here. And if you're on Instagram, you'll see me post it on there too. Um, and this is the Scirocco Play Suit by Deer and Doe. Um, again, I'll show you the pattern. Here we are, I made the play suit version here, and I'll put a picture up of me wearing it. Um, I made a play suit, um, Scrocco play suit last year, right at the end of summer, and I wore it and I wasn't really sure if it was me, but then I got it out of um, my wardrobe this year and tried it on, and actually I liked it a lot more than I thought I had last year, so I decided I'd make another one. And um, when I saw this, well actually, I bought this fabric, it's a lovely um, jersey from Stoff and Steel, um, so it's got quite large print flowers and some little white dots on it with a navy base. And I initially bought this thinking I would make a Zazadi dress with it, but when it arrived, the flower print was larger than I expected, and I thought actually that would look great as a Scirocco, um, and I wanted to make one, so I thought that was just meant to be. Um, so that's what I made, and yeah, as you'll see, that, that's it. And it took a bit of time to cut this one out because I had to be really careful about the flower placement. I didn't want to have like sort of flowers in <laughs> difficult places, so um, I'm really pleased with how it turned out and where the flowers are. And um, I've worn this one as well, and really enjoyed wearing that one. Um, it's actually a surprisingly simple make, the Scrocco, because sort of, I think it looks quite effective and it is a lovely shape, um, but it sews up really quickly. Um, the neck the neck band around here, I find just goes in really well. Um, there's no sort of stay tape or anything needed. It just somehow kind of the way it's been drafted, it sort of hugs really well around here so it doesn't flap out or anything. It's got really deep pockets and um, it's really comfortable and practical um, for, yeah, just um, mucking around my kids and everything so I don't need to worry about flashing my pants or anything like that because it's a play suit um, the only trouble is going to the toilet it can take a bit longer to get it on and off but um, um, the, actually um, my measurements work quite well with this because um, I, was bit, I wasn't sure about how to um, um, go with the measurements when I first made this um, but I, in the end I, I, after reading a lot online I decided to go just right with my measurements so I ended up t um, um, grading between three sizes um, so what I did was I graded between um, 
a 34 for my bust, a 38 for my waist, and a 36 for my hips. And so that works quite well for me because the waist comes up slightly larger than the hips, so I don't need quite as much stretch in the fabric to get the waist over my hips when I do take it off. Um, but yeah, the sizing on this one is quite critical and the stretch of the fabric as well. So um, that was my scrocco. The next make um, is a slightly less summery one, but I think I'll get a lot of wear out of it come autumn. And it's been one that's been on my to sew list for absolutely ages, so I was really pleased to finally get around to um, having a go at it. And it's using this pattern here, um, the Megan Nielsen Darling Ranges pattern. Um, so I, again, I've made this, used this pattern before last year. I made it once before. And last time I made quite, I'm used, actually I'll put a picture up, I used um, quite a um, busy fabric. It was a chambre from Minerva and it's quite pretty and um, yeah, and I decided that um, I'd love to make another version that looks just like the um, version on the cover because I've always thought this was just a, such a classic, um, perfect shirt dress, um, just a plain chambre with some white buttons. So I thought, right, well, I'm going to give it a go. And I bought some fabric from a fabric shop that was new to me um, called Ditto Fabrics and um, who have a lovely and really interesting selection of fabrics. And I bought some other fabric and then when I was looking on the website I saw some chambre that was really reasonably priced and so I thought I'd give that a go because it was just the right colour what, what I wanted. And so here's the, the dress. Um, I should get set so back a little bit so you can see it. And I'll put a picture up of me wearing it too. So I did the kind of pattern pretty much per the, um, per the pattern envelope so it's got the little elasticated cuffs of three quarter length sleeves and it's got, oh, I've got the waist ties. The only thing I did differently was instead of putting the waist ties um, on the back, I added them at the, wa at the waist seams. So um, I thought I'd give that a go because I thought that look would look a bit neater and cleaner um, for what I wanted. And then it's got the white buttons um, and I went with um, thread that uh, matched the fabric so that I didn't want to make a feature of the thread because I wanted to keep it as um, simple as possible. Um, so yeah, I'm really pleased that actually. It's, I, I often am drawn to print, so it's really nice to have some plain things in my wardrobe. And I just think you can't go wrong with like a chambre shirt dress. And um, I think it'll be really good for um, particularly autumn and spring when it's um, not super cold, but not super, super hot either. That'll be perfect. Um, so yeah, oh, that's, I'll show you how the waist tie is supposed to be. Um, you can see there, it's kind of supposed to be just at the back as a little feature. But yeah, I added them in when I was sewing the side seams. Um, so yeah, it's a lovely pattern, the Darling Ranges. Um, I did find with this pattern, it's one that required quite a lot of alteration for me, which I did first time around when I made it. I actually um, had read a few things online about how of the fit, so I thought I'd make a wearable, no, I didn't make a wearable twirl, I made, I made a non-wearable twirl, just of the bodice, using some really old um, cotton fabric I had. Um, and um, I'm really pleased I did, because I did need to make a few adjustments. I made a broad shoulder adjustment, which I don't usually need to do, but for this one I did, because it was what I found was when I when I tried the twirl on to start with, it was kind of um, pulling across here and it felt very tight. So I made it, I looked up how to make a broad shoulder adjustment and that made a big difference to the fit, um, particularly around the neckline. Um, so yeah, that, that was one time where a twirl was really handy for this one. Um, yeah, it's a lovely dress. I'm hoping I'll get lots of wear out of it. This chambre is really um, lovely and soft and I think it'll wash well, um, maybe get a little bit um, sort of more um, sort of age looking as I wash it, which I think will be quite nice. Um, so yeah, just a classic shirt dress and, and quite nice to do something that's not a print, no print matching, um, made it a little bit easier. Um, so that was my final kind of totally new make for um, June. But one other thing I wanted to share with you was a um, refashion I did um, during May that I hadn't um, shared yet. Um, and it's this here, which I've actually got hanging inside out on a hanger, but I'll show you. Um, so this is, um, and I'll show you that's the inside of it with this red top. This um, is, this was at least, a, um, an estuary skirt by So Liberated. Um, and I'll show you the pattern. And this, this is the, my first version of the estuary skirt. And so that's the pattern. And I kind of did this version here with the kind of patch pockets. Um, and I kind of, it, and I, I'll show you a picture of what it looked like originally. I made it midi length and, um, and with the elasticated waistband at the back it had originally, like the pattern. Um, and um, I made it in this uh, um, this linen, I think it's a cotton linen mix possibly, from Fabric Godmother. And I think it was a little bit too thick for the gathering um, and the elastic at the back. Um, and, and also I didn't really feel like the midi length of the skirt really felt like me at all. Um, I wasn't sure what shoes to wear it with and when I wore it I just didn't feel that great. Um, although it looks amazing on other people, just sometimes just things aren't you. Um, so I decided instead of um, sort of scrapping it completely, I'd love to try and refashion it. Um, so what I did was I took the waistband off and I shortened it. So I've made it into kind of a, 
a mini skirt. I haven't actually taken photos of this one, so I'll try and get some photos um, so I can put it up, a photo, show a photo of me wearing it, but it's kind of a mini length, it comes just above my knees. And I reused the patch pockets, but because I've made it mini length, I made them a little bit thinner, um, so they didn't sort of take up too much space in the front of the skirt. And then I took the weight, yeah, so I took the elasticated waistband off, and instead I put a fitted waistband, um, and I used for this the um, Mega Nielsen, um, what's it, a Brumby skirt waistband, which I know fits me well. And then I just regathered the skirt and I sewed it onto the Brumby waistband, and then added the buttons on again. Um, and so for the um, for the estuary skirt, the buttons can be a faux placket because you've got the elastic at the back of the waist to get it on and off. But I had to do make I had to make these into real buttons, um, so you can see real buttons to be able to get it on and off now because it's got a fitted waistband. And then I was quite pleased because my husband had an old pair of pajama bottoms that had got holes in the knees, so I cut those off to make pajama shorts for him. And then I used the the, the leftover fabric from the bottom of the pajamas to make the um, facing for this waistband, which I think is quite sweet. The kind of check fabric and it kind of the navy matches quite well with the blue so that's what I did um so this skirt is kind of a wintry one um because it's quite a thick linen-y cotton fabric but I think I'm going to get a lot more wear out of it than I ever would out of the um longer version so I'm really pleased to have done that and it was quite fun actually having a go at refashioning something so I think um one of my plans for this year is to have a look and see what garments in my wardrobe I don't wear and what maybe I could do with them to make them feel like they're more me um so yeah that was the last thing I wanted to show you um, so thanks so much for watching. Um, I've got um, I've been buying a few fabrics um, for July, so hopefully I'll be back soon with a July fabric haul video to share those with you. Um, and um, if you like this video, I'd be um, really happy if you give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, then I'd love it if you'd subscribe to me, um, and so you can see what else I'll be videoing going forward. Um, and what else is there to say other than um, hope you have a great day. Hope it's not too hot where you are, and um, yeah, hopefully see you again soon. Thanks so much for watching. Bye bye.